With over 250,000 views, the Cyclone is by far the most popular base on my channel, and it's still a common sight on many servers today, even after 9 months of releasing a video. But since then, I've gotten much better at building. I can now see the original base is full of flaws, so I thought it's finally time for an updated version. And with that, I introduce to you Tornado, a vastly improved version of the Cyclone. Now with a mini China wall, improved defences, mobility, and absolutely massive open core. But don't worry, it still has three roof bunkers just like the original. But now they're separate from the open core and work on both PC and console. Of course, these upgrades come at a cost, but it's still easily manageable for a group of 8 to 12 players. As always, sanctuary codes and raid costs are in the description. The sponsor. Now onto the tour. First, I'll show you the upkeep of the six external TCs. As this new version is only wall stacked on three sides instead of six, three of the externals are only upkeeping the wide gaps and china wall, while the other three are upkeeping parts of the shell too. Wall stacking is necessary to lessen upkeep on the main TC and for the bunkers to work. Enter one of the six gatehouses with peaks on either side looking back into the compound. The china wall wraps around the entire base. The space for up to 24 turrets, 12 bedrooms, batteries and peaks to defend from. There's even space for 12 large furnaces inside. One of the best things about a china wall is that it extends privilege to each external, meaning raiders need to raid every single one to grief your base. And if for some crazy reason you still want to build the old cyclone, this china wall fits straight onto it. Enter the base through one of three entrances. There are chutes on the right leading up to the floors above. Around the shell, there's space for 12 turrets, with breach peaks on three sides to survey the compound. You can also access the floors above through the ladder hatch. Access the starter core through the single door airlock. In here, there are space for around 28 large boxes and everything else you need to get started. Here, you can see the upkeep of the main TC, which can fit around 17 hours of materials in. Jump up here to defend the front door and access the open core. We have two boxes behind each window, with ankle biter peaks to defend. The open core is on the second and third floor, so you can get it built as quickly as possible. In here, there are 70 large boxes, with 9 turrets. Six of them are behind the ramp peaks, so it can't be HV rocketed, making it very difficult for raiders to gain control. In the centre, we have the usual 10 vending machine setup, reflecting your loot to bait an online. You can also exit the open core through one of the three mobility chutes around the outside. Going down the chute leads to a double bedroom, with peaks looking back to the open core. Going down again, you can exit the base or defend the shell. Jump up to the fourth floor to access the main bedrooms. On this floor, we have ramp peaks which overlook the entire open core, a huge improvement to the original design. With 12 bedrooms and lockers in the centre, your team will never run out of respawns. These chutes go back down to the open core, or we'll use the ladder hatches in these ones to get down to the shell quickly. Every chute has a peak looking back to the shooting floor, should raiders attempt to take control of it. To access the bunkers, jump up to the fifth floor. Up here, we have another six double bedrooms, in case the ones below become compromised. To open the bunkers, place a twig roof from the bedrooms below. In here, you can store your best loot when you log off, along with your main batteries. To close the bunkers, destroy the roof, although you can leave them open all the time if you like. There's a flame turret or to close the bunker if anyone else gets near it. Run outside through one of the three exits to access the wide gap shooting floor. This part is largely unchanged from the original design, so it works so well on this footprint. 
The only changes I've made is to add the ramps for the new crouch shoot meta. And I've added single doors to the drop downs to give you more control so you can't get shot in the foot from behind. Jump up here for more peak downs and single door peak ups which overlook the roof to take down anyone they manage to get past your turrets. Use the mobility chutes to access the roof with more shooting floor and roof defences. There are three other exits onto the roof as you can see. The overall roof design is largely unchanged. I kept the original ramp peak downs but replaced the side ones with roofs as they provide better angles to shoot from and make the base look a little different from the original cyclone. Begin the build by placing down a TC to secure the area. Make sure you place the foundations high enough to complete the whole footprint. I recommend building this base in a really flat area, like an ice lake, on the shore or in the desert. When the TC is secure, expand the footprint like so. In this tutorial, I'll be building everything in its final material, so just upgrade when you have the resources. From the TC, build five walls on each side, leaving a gap for the door. Oh, and I forgot to mention, always lock your TCs, otherwise there's no point in having externals. And definitely practice this on a build server, you're dumb if you don't. Now seal in the roof, leaving a gap for the jump up to the open core. a half wall and low wall here as a peek into the airlock. Now the start is secure, finish all the loop rooms. Finish the jump up with half walls all around, then build windows around the center for the open core peaks. Now we're going to expand the footprint and build three external TCs. At three equal points around the base, build a hexagon like so. Then build out by four square foundations, raising the last one and upgrading it. On these parts of the base, you must remove this twig before building the external TC. Place a low twig foundation here, then build the external housing. Again, always remember to lock your TCs, otherwise raiders can easily grief your base. Connect the TC to the gatehouse foundation with a low twig ramp inside and a high metal ramp outside. If the main TC in your base gets destroyed and you need to replace it, first you need to disconnect all externals, like so. Reconnect by replacing the twig ramp. Build an airlock on this side, which will act as our entrance into the compound. Repeat this step on the other three sides of the base. If you're confused about the placement, watch the top down view coming up next. On the other three sides of the base, we're going to wall stack. To do this, build up by seven squares and put a triangle on the end. After that, remove all the squares but leave the triangle. If you want to learn more about wall stacking, see the link in the description. Now build back towards the base with a series of three half moons. 
followed by a hexagon. Upgrade the hexagon and destroy the triangle buildup. These foundations aren't connected to a TC yet, so we'll do that now. Build up by another four squares, raising the last one. This time, you can leave a twig here so the hexagon doesn't decay. Now build your externals just like we did before. I speeded this part up as they're all exactly the same. If you built the original cyclone before, and you're wondering why this version is only wall stacked on three sides instead of six, that's because it makes the base much easier and faster to build, and also improves stability. Now you can remove these three twig squares and we'll connect the gatehouse to the hexagon properly. Build a half moon of triangles, then delete the first three. From this triangle, build a square and a triangle on each side. Upgrade the triangles, then remove the squares. Connect the foundations together with frames like so, making sure you have two in the middle. These will form the foundations for our wide gap. Now connect the wide gap to the gatehouse with two wall frames. Now we can connect the gatehouse to the hexagon with a wall frame and some floor frames passing through the wide gap. On this part, build a half wall and a window. Place a square frame on the top of the window and attach the two pieces together with one more square frame in the middle. Now everything is connected together and it won't decay. Again, repeat this step on the other three sides. Watch the upcoming animation if you're unsure about the placement. Here you can see the wide gap connection again. Now we're going to place the foundations for the china wall on the wall stack side of the base. Build the foundations like so. We do this now, as it makes it easier to place the compound walls. Connect the foundations together with walls so they don't decay. You can build all this out of wood if you don't have many resources at the moment, and upgrade it later. We're also going to build the windmill towers after this, so you can place turrets in these pods if you want to protect your compound as quickly as possible. Repeat exactly the same steps on the other side. If you don't want the china wall, that's up to you. You can just place compound walls in between each gatehouse. If for some reason you need a tutorial for that, check the link in the description. Now build this again on the other three wall stacked sides of the base. Note that the china wall is slightly different on the sides which are not wall stacked, as I'll show you now. Note that when all the foundations for your china wall are built, this will carry privilege over to each external TC, so if one of your TCs gets destroyed, you need to disconnect all of them to replace it. To finish the china wall, complete this step on the other side of the base. After that, locate this square in the center of the china wall. Build a square and a triangle foundation, remove the square, and then connect the triangle like so. This will form the towers for our windmills. Repeat this step on all six sides of the base. Now we can place down our compound walls. Place one pointing inwards either side of the triangle, then fill in the gap next to the external TC with one more wall on both sides. Lastly, place two barricades on top of each external, like so. If you want to get your turrets working as quickly as possible, build up the windmill towers like so by six floors. Place two twig triangles on the top and then your wind turbine. 
remove the bottom twig wall frame. This will collapse all the build up, but the wind turbine will still balance in place. You can place 12 large furnaces outside the china wall, like so. Don't place them inside the china wall yet. Then build some wood triangles here as a quick jump up onto the ramp. Now, from the three wall stack sides of the base, complete the footprint as shown, with a twig square on each side, followed by three metal triangles. Remove the twig square and build wall frames on these two triangles. Next, complete the breech peaks like so. The turret pods will go here. Remember to place the fence after the turret. This is the floor to your open core, so make it HQM. Make sure on this triangle there's a gap at the front. Now build the roofs for the breech peak and seal it in with a half wall, ceilings and a ladder hatch. This section of the base is now complete. Repeat it again on the other two wall stack sides. Now we're going to build the entrances and the chutes. Place a door frame and windows on both sides. After the walls on top, build a half wall and a low wall here as a peak into the shell. Complete the entrance with the door on either side and the ceiling. This ceiling can actually stay metal. Repeat this step on all three sides until it looks like this. Watch the upcoming animation for a better view on the footprint and the shell. Now we can start building the open core. First place a window in front of each chute. Then fill in the gaps with half walls all around. Build stone ramps on each square. Place furnaces in the triangles. First place a twig frame, then the furnaces. This can be a little tricky, so I suggest doing it later when you finish the open core. Next, seal in the chutes. Place a wall and then build a jump up here.
this outside wall must be rotated this way in order to cover the gap, which I'll show you in a minute. If you want to see how to put two beds in here, check the link in the description. Now complete the top of the chute in the same way. This part will be the entrance to the open core, so of course we need more wall frames. On the left hand side, we can build a locker. Now repeat this step again on the other three sides as shown. To the left of the entrance, build a loot room. Build a twig half wall and a triangle here so you can place a shelf. Now crouch down and place a stone ramp. Make sure it's facing towards you. The ramp just makes it easier to access the boxes. If you can't place it, don't worry. You can actually fit one more box down here without the ramp. Now build a wall frame and attach a ceiling to it. That's one loop room finished. Now do the same on the other side of the jump up. Now jump on top of the loot rooms to place a frame and a ramp. Make sure you place the frame first and that the ramp is raised. Now that's your loot rooms on either side of the jump up finished. Repeat this step on the other two sides of the base. When you've done that, we've got more loop rooms on these three triangles. First place a twig half wall to build a shelf. Put a frame in the middle so you can access the boxes below. Then another full shelf above it. Now we'll jump on top of the shelf with the balls behind and complete the jump up from the ladder hatch. Now the chute is sealed, build the ceiling and then another twig half wall for another shelf. The turret will go here, so place two half walls in the middle to protect it from the back. Now the loot room is complete, repeat this step again on the other two sides. Once you've done all that, finish the open core with a set of frames around the centre, then seal in the roof. If you want to know how to place 10 vending machines here, slow down the video and watch it carefully. The vending machines must be over the edge of the triangle slightly.
Now the open core is done, we're going to complete the fourth floor. Build walls all around the edge that leave a gap next to each jump up. In the gap, build a half wall and a window for the peaks onto the shooting floor. Next, complete the shoots. They're the same on all six sides. You can build a loot room on the right or leave it open to place mixing tables. It's up to you. Next, place a shelf for the turrets to sit on. You can place one above and below the shelf if you like. In the centre, build walls all around like so and place lockers in each gap. Build the wall on the right of each locker and on the left, build the housing for another locker. You can replace these with furnaces or batteries if you prefer. Every room is exactly the same, with two beds in each. Lastly, put wall frames all around the edge. Complete the ceiling, then put as many doors in the wall frames as you like. Before completing the fifth floor, we're going to build up the wide gap shooting floor so you can defend your base as quickly as possible. So now, build the wide gaps on the other three sides as we did earlier in the video. Obviously on these sides, you do not need the connection to the shell as it's not wall stacked. Do this again on the other three sides, then build up all the wall frames on the wide gap by two floors. Next jump down from the fifth floor and place twig scaffolding all around. This will help you place the next two floors of the wide gap without falling down. On these two triangles which are attached to the base, build one set of wall frames and on the next floor up, place windows on the inside and single doors on the outside. You should place the doors now as it's easier, but you actually don't need to lock them. This half wall and the two triangles actually need to be metal. Do this again on all six sides, but then delete the twig.
Next, attach floors to the wide gap. Put windows all around with a ramp in the middle. Do this on all six sides of the base. Then complete these parts of the shooting floor with squares on each side and then finish the roof peak ups. Remember to repeat this step on all six sides of the base. After that, build walls to the left of each jump up. And then add more wall frames to the shooting floor, with doors on every corner. Now expand the chutes up to the fifth floor. First find the ones with the ladder hatches, as they're different on every other side. Seal these ones off as they don't go all the way up to the roof. In a few minutes we'll be sealing the back of these off with the bunkers. Do this again on the other sides with the ladder hatch underneath. On the sides that don't have a ladder hatch and go all the way down to the ground floor, have exits going all the way up to the roof, so expand them like so. Put a low wall here as another peak into the shooting floor. Build a half wall and a window here. The window acts as another peak onto the roof. Again, repeat this step on the other sides. Going back to the sides that had the ladder hatches, seal them off to build the bunkers. Place a wall frame on both sides. Make sure it's rotated correctly so it covers the gap caused by the wall stacking. Then place a wall and open the bunker with a twig roof. Right now there's actually a gap between the wall and the ceiling of the bunker. To close it, make sure you place a ceiling like this, attaching to the triangle. If you're having trouble, you can also place it from inside the bunker, like so. Now repeat this step on the other three sides of the base. As we're going to box the bunkers in now, later on you'll have to place the roof from down below, like this. As there are six bedrooms, but only three bunkers, put a rug or something here so you know where to place it. Now put walls around the edge of the bunkers. Don't forget the flame turrets. Now next to each bunker, build a locker room and a bedroom. Don't seal in the roof yet, as it's easier to do from above. Do the same on this side. Now do it again on the other two sides of the base. Next place your wall frames.
Whatever you do, don't put wall frames in these locations. Otherwise, you'll seal the bunker forever. Put as many doors into wall frames as you like. You don't have to use garage doors on this floor if you don't want to. Now the bedrooms are complete, we can seal in the roof. First put the hexagon in the centre. Next, seal in the squares. Attach a triangle to either side of the square. Make sure it's in the correct slot. You might have noticed already, but there's a small gap in the roof. This is due to the bunkers. You can seal it with a low wall if you're worried about raiders trying to take advantage of it, but that's completely up to you. Above each bedroom, place a square frame and then a square floor. Lastly, seal in the three triangles left over. Next we'll seal in the shooting floor and complete the roof. Do the same all the way around the base. Now complete the chutes with exits onto the roof. Put a single door at the back for a vending machine. The turret pod will go here. After that, build the other two exits. Now finish the roof design like so, with a square roof on either side of the window in the middle. Don't forget the ramp like I did in this one. Then put triangle roofs on the peacups, pointing in. These are a perfect place for turrets, meaning you have nine altogether on the roof. You definitely need SAM sites with this base, and right here is a perfect place to put them. Lastly, build some more windmill towers. Each one will power a battery in the bunker. Do this again on top of each roof exit. Now to complete the china wall, first build the gatehouses. This can be done at any point in the build, I recommend doing it last to make sure the base is as secure as possible. The gatehouse on every side of the base is exactly the same. Now to put the bedrooms. Place a window and an embrasure here, so you can move the window to defend. To the right of the bedroom, build a battery compartment with a turret pod on top. For the peak, Put half walls all around the bottom, then windows on top. Now mirror the bedroom on this side. In this compartment, you could put anything you like, but I recommend putting three furnaces for making charcoal.
The channel wall is identical on every side, so just repeat this five more times. For the barricades, use twig and ladders to help you place them. Slow down the video if you're at all confused. Lastly, you can line up your furnaces like this. Well done, you've completed the base. I hope it serves you well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And join my Discord if you need help building, or my Twitch for future shenanigans. Cheers.